Narration, fiction and nonfiction. What is an inference? Making an inference is the ability to read between the lines, to understand information that is not stated explicitly in a text. When you make an inference, you're applying prior knowledge and experiences to the text or passage you are reading in order to make educated guesses about what is happening what may have happened or what may be about to happen in the future. When you make use of the following statements, you are most likely making an inference. I realize that. Based on, I predict that. I can draw these conclusions. Based on this evidence, I think. Narration. How an author chooses to tell a story is an important choice. Readers get a sense of the story's characters based on what they are told and what they are not told. We may feel close to a character because we know what he or she thinks and feels. At the same time, not being privy to such information will change the way we read the story and form opinions on its characters. Please read carefully the following definitions. Narrator this is the person or character who tells a story. Don't confuse this with the story's author. First person narration. In this form of narration, a character in the story or novel tells his own story. This form of narration uses the pronouns I, we, our, and so on. Third person omniscient narration. In this form of narration, a voice outside of the story recounts the action using the third person, he, she, it, they, and so on. Not only can this narrator report actions, she, he, can also tell the reader what all the characters are thinking and feeling. Third person limited omniscient narration. This form of narration is similar to third person omniscient. This narrator uses he, she, it, etc., but this narrator can only tell what one or some of the characters are thinking or feeling. Third person objective narration. This narrator also uses the third person but can only report the actions of the characters. Example The Runner, version A. I wake up feeling tired again, 5 45 a.m. Oh man, so early, but it's worth it. I'm barely conscious, but that I know. I slip on a long sleeve t-shirt and put on a short sleeve t-shirt on over it. Sweatpants, Gore-Tex jacket, the one I got for my birthday from my girlfriend Carrie, mitts and baseball hat. And my shoes and socks, of course. I can't run 10K without my shoes. Out on the street, the tap-tap of my shoes on the pavement is the only sound I hear, but for my breath adjusting to the cold November air. No cars, no buses, nobody. My dad ran a marathon when he was 16, and I'm going to do one better, 15. I'm going to finish the Toronto Marathon as a grade 9 student. I'm going to prove myself to that jerk if it's the last thing I do. The reader knows the thoughts and feelings of the boy according to the boy. We read about how he feels tired but determined. We learn about his girlfriend Carrie in passing. And we know that he is competitive with his dad. He even calls his dad a jerk. Example, the runner version B. The clock by the boy's bed reads 545. The boy opens the curtain behind the clock and looks out at the dark sky. A tree can be faintly seen, no leaves. The boy, 15 years old, gets dressed in running clothing, putting on many layers. He says not a word and makes barely a sound as he stretches on his bedroom floor. The boy, all 130 pounds of him, leaves his house in a quiet suburban street. He runs down the middle of the road, passing minivans and modest cars that sit in the driveway of his neighbor's townhouses. A man stands in the living room of the boy's house, watching him slip away into the dark. The man looks much like the boy, 20 pounds heavier and about 30 years older. The man, the boy's father, takes a sip from his coffee cup and slowly nods his head. The man turns away from the window, smiling. Same story, right? 
but the readers provide him with different information. We get a sense of his neighborhood based on its cars and its houses. This time the boy's father is a character in the story. He smiles as he watches his son go out for an early morning run. He seems proud of him, or maybe he's smiling remembering his own running glory days. What do you think? Fiction Definition Literature in the form of prose, especially short stories and novels, that describes imaginary events and people. Fiction are stories that are not true. Nonfiction Definition Prose writing that is based on facts, real events, and real people, such as biography or history. Conclusion Do you know the definitions of narration, fiction, and nonfiction?